Everyday Nerd here, and today we'll be doing the features of the helmet minus the earpiece, which is what I call it. So first we have to go back and um, I'm just going to thicken the pieces a bit more. I think I'm going to do, do it to 5 millimeters. I had it at, I think it was 2 previously. Now, so I don't know if you can notice, but for the face part of the helmet, this part here, I notice that this part is a bit more it's wider than this back part here. So what I did was I'm going to draw some lines, like an L shape, a corner. And I'm going to cut the body. Cut the body so I can then take this outer piece here, this outer all this, and I'm going to shrink it a little bit. Not like so, you know, just a little bit so you can see a bit of a height difference. Now, once that is done, the next step is to do some lines at the top so you can do the I don't know what you would call that, but it's the I guess you could say the style of the helmet that has the lines at the top. And I just did that by splitting the body. So you, I usually use a mirror tool to make sure the lines are, sh are um, equal distance of each other. So then once you do the splitting body, you can see I can then push this out. So this part here, that line, Trojan piece, whatever you want to call it, will be the same. We shouldn't line up with the front piece. So. And then look at this for a bit. That looks about right. So you have that. And then the next step will be to add the, the inner part of the Trojan piece, which is again, I will use the mirroring tool because that's how you can make sure it's exact. But for this one, it would be better to split the face instead of the body because this one you don't have to pull or do anything. We just need to use it as um, as as a split face because we'll be using the pipe tool to create that engraved path that this part has, the Trojan piece has in it. So that's why for some you'll do split face versus split body because split body I can instead pull and adjust the offset and it'll be fine. But if I did split face, you can't really, well, you can, but for this case, it wouldn't work, which is why I did one part split face and one part split body. So, and then here, so this part's a bit, well, yeah, you have to connect that because that Trojan piece has it connected here. But this part here, some people, some, some images had it where you just had that perfect L like how it was before I did this sketch on top. I didn't see that way. To me, the Trojan piece was almost on top of this eyebrow piece that was in the front. So I just split the body of the front part. So then you'd have three bodies. And then I would just combine the unibrow part with the Trojan, with the Trojan piece. These names aren't really helpful, but it's the best way I can describe it. So now the Trojan piece is even longer. It's even longer and has that rectangle, not rectangular, but that polygon edged up in the front, you can call it unibrow piece, which is why I did it that way. I hope that makes sense. So now that that is done, the next step is to create the pipes. So now we're going to create the pipes. So we're going to have the pipe differentiate, differentiate between the front face piece and the unibrow piece that's not combined with the Trojan piece. And now we also have to do pipes in the inner Trojan part where we split face. So we've got to do that. So it can look nice. Like I said, you guys don't have to do it this way. There's a bunch of other ways to do it, but this is what I, this is all I could think of. So if you find better ways or better ideas, let me know. And now the last pipe we're going to probably have to do is the one that's just on the front face part for the eyebrows. You could call it that. So you just draw a line. And once you have the line, you do split face. Once you do split face, you do a pipe. So the one thing I forgot to mention before is every time I do a construct plane, I try to push it out past the helmet 
So when I draw a plane or when I do something, I can actually do my sketch and not worry about touching the body. Sometimes I forget and, and I end up having to turn, off, turn the body off. So here we're going to use the chamfer tool so we can get that nice edgy look. Um, some of the helmets I saw didn't, didn't have this. Uh, yeah, I mean this part is where it gets really subjective I believe because there are a lot of variations of the helmet. Some of them didn't even have like the eyebrow and Trojan piece kind of, not eyebrow, unibrow and Trojan piece combined as one. They had them separate. So it depends on what kind of type of helmet you're trying to do. So that's that for that. So now that we have all these pipes done, we're not going to do the back part of the helmet. So this back part, this one's another one <laughs> that there were so many variations of. So if mine is like, if these, what I'm doing is completely off and not even like, oh, this isn't how it is, just let me know. And maybe I'll try doing another one with a more accurate view or depiction of the helmet. So we're going to draw a rectangle. This rectangle will be the back piece of the helmet. So you can extrude. So it's going to touch it completely. And we're going to keep it as a separate body. And yeah, I know, I know. It's like doing it like this, you're going to be like, oh, but it's not even straight and whatnot. But you'll see, you'll see. So now we're going to do a sketch that's going to be on the profile side. And we need to project the planes onto this profile side of the sketch. This is the sketch that will cut the, the back piece that we're trying to get so it can match the curvature of the back piece. So the first cut we're going to do is going to be a cut that makes it flat, a flat, sorry, that matches the curvature exactly. It's going to be a smooth cut. When we do this cut, we also need to split the front part and the back part. Because if you remember correctly, since we just brought that plane in, well not plane, extruded in, you're going to have inside the helmet some of what we extruded in. So we're going to have to cut the front and the back so both sides are smooth. And once you do that, you can just hide the bodies. And then now, you see it's baby smooth. Baby smooth. So now, now that that's done, that it's curved, we can just join the body. That stuff isn't needed, but that can be done. Um, actually, it might be needed because the next part we're going to do is uh, we're going to cut inside so we can get the inner rectangle piece. So you can project a plane onto a sketch and then I like to do offsets and I'll just match them perfectly so that I know it's equal distance and then just draw a line between some of this like some of them had that top rectangle part really high some of them had them really low so I just you know I, I did my best bet best guess I did notice there was about I think it's five or six razor blade pieces which we'll be doing in a second. So now for this one, I had to split body, which uh, trying to figure out how can I explain this part. We have to, oh yeah. So this is the reason I had to split body. It just got to me because if we did split body, you'll see I'll be able to push it in by extruding it in and cutting it. If I did split face, I wouldn't be able to do that. So now that we have the indent, the next step is to cut that indent in half but well, not in half but just a little bit because once we cut a little bit of that indent and split the body of that indent is where we'll be able to draw lines and cut out the oh my god how did i just forget what i just called them oh shoot the the, the design that's in the back of the of the helmet because now that we split the body of the indent, the indent will now have two bodies and we'll be playing with the front part of the indent body, which is what you'll see. And because of the split body, we can then draw the razor blades. This isn't even, okay. I don't know why I call them razor blades. It, it, I don't, it just reminds me of a razor blade. So call these razor blade pieces. So we'll have the razor blade pieces and you're going to draw a sketch of them on an offset plane or you can just do it right I think you should be able to do it right on top because it's an off it's it's cut in 
Um, so you might not have to do an offset plane to do it or a sketch plane. Right. So now that the razor blade is done, it is time to split the body. And then now what we're going to do once we split one, you could just keep doing more sketches and more sketches, or you could do what I'm going to do. And we're going to do feature because this is a feature that we did splitting the body. And we're just going to do a path, which you can open up the sketch and click the, the path of the sketch. Cause that's easier. Cause I don't think we'll be able to click a line. You hit okay. And you're gonna have all those bodies. And then you just, I angle them each one, one by one. Cause I saw there was a slight angle. You could have them flat and just do a pipe in between each one. But I saw there was some form of differentiation between each of the razor blades. And then looking back again, some of the razor blades, they were more um, at an angle. So I have to go back, adjust the sketch, make them an angle, and then boom. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And I noticed a lot of these viewers, at least 50%, are not subscribed. So if you want to see something that you want, subscribe and comment in the videos of what you think would be interesting for me to make or a better way for me to do things. So until next time. Bye.